Hello, hi. Today we are going to see about the patient safety. I'm Dr. Shankar Narayan, Senior Resident, Department of Anesthesia Legis Link. So, what is safety? Safety, yes, stands for since the error, A, act, act to prevent it. If follow safety guidelines, E, inquire into accidents or deaths. T, take appropriate remedial measures, Y, you are responsible to. Okay, why safety is there in the hospital? Hospital is a people intensive place, provide service to sick people round the clock, 24 hours daily, 365. Uh, people have a free access to enter any part of the hospital and in any time for advice and treatment. The hospital atmosphere is filled with emotions, excitement, life and happiness, death and sorrow. Since hospital operates under continuous strain, it gives rise to irritation, confrontation, conflicts, aggressions, threatening the lives of hospital staff and hospital properties. So whose safety we are going to concentrate about? The people who is coming into the hospital and the place where we are staying and the property belongs to the hospital. So it entirely constitutes to the hospital safety. So safety of a place. So what kind of safety we are going to give? Safety to the infrastructure, safety in terms of fire, safety in terms of maintaining the electrical, mechanical uh, instruments, okay? Safety of a property uh, uh, constitutes stores, assets, and equipments of the uh, property. F for safety of the people, uh, who are the people? They are staff, nurse, doctors, visitors, patients, and uh, any other persons who are in the premise of the hospital. Patient safety. Patient safety is the absence of preventable harm to a patient during the process of healthcare. The discipline of patient safety is the coordinated effort to prevent harm to patients caused by the process of healthcare itself. It is generally agreed upon that the meaning of patient safety is please do not harm. Origin of patient safety concept. Uh, it arises from early bad days, Hippocratic word. I'll prescribe regimen for good of my patient according to my ability and my judgment and never do harm to anyone. Improving patient safety means reducing patient's harm. Hospitals were found to give care to those who need it and to patients safe is their mortal, moral duty. Current environment, mm, as, of, as of now and in current days, Errors and system failures are repeated. Action on known risk is very slow. Detection system in their infancy. Many events are not reported. Understanding of causes are limited. Few examples of successful scales are up. Limited measurement of impacts are there. A blame culture alive and well. Defensiveness and secrecy are maintained still now. That's why patient safety is much needed. What are the medical errors? One in 10 patients admitted to hospital suffer from an adverse event, secondary to uh, the uh, hospital interventions. The Institute of Medicals in their study found out that in USA, medical error injury, one in 25 hospital patients, kills about 44,000 to 98,000 patients every year. Medical error cost United Nations billions of dollars each year. How dangerous is healthcare? Less than one death per one lakh encounters. Nuclear power, European railroad, scheduled airlines. One death in less than one lakh, but more than 10,000 encounters are seen in driving chemical manufacturing. More than one death per thousand encounters are seen in monetary jumping, mountain climb. Main thing is internet, healthcare. Whose error? 66% accidents are caused entirely by patient. 16% accidents due to error, error by hospital staff. 14% accident uh, staffs and patients both equally responsible. 4% accidents due to physical, mechanical, and electrical errors. Why there is an error? In most cases, fault is not willful negligence, but systemic flaw. Inadequate communication and widespread process variation and patient ignorance. 
people responsible are the doctor nurse pharmacist technicians and patient themselves so what are the types of errors there are many types of errors like adverse health care event event or omission arising due to clinic during clinical examination and causing physical or psychological injury to a patient then error failure to complete a planned action as intended or the use of an incorrect plan of action to achieve a given plan healthcare near miss situation in which an event or omission or arising during clinical care fails to develop further whether or not as a result of compensation action thus preventing injury adverse drug reactions you need response to a drug which is noxious unintended and occurs at doses used for prophylaxis diagnosis or therapy it can be either predictable or unpredictable what are medication errors any preventable event that may cause or lead to inappropriate medication use or patient harm while the medication is in the control of healthcare professionals patient or consumer what is sentinel error surgery on the wrong body part surgery on the wrong patient patient give, receiving the wrong medication focus on, focus on near misses no patient harm therefore no blame no guilt no fear of litigation focus on future prevention human error to err is humane human beings make mistakes because the systems tasks and the process they work in are poorly designed every error has a root cause and every cause has a solution one unwillful error is a miss repeated error is a crime errors can be prevented with everyone's initiative with the system here comes the role of patient safety wch initiatives jan 2002 executive board discussed the patient safety may 2002 resolution adopted by 55th world health assembly may 2004 World Health Assembly supports establishing World Alliance for Patient Safety. In October 2004, launches the World Alliance and Forward Program by DG of WHO. In December 2005, first progress report of the Alliance happened. So WHO or World Alliance for Patient Safety coordinates, spreads, accelerates improvements in the patient safety worldwide. WHO patient safety was created to facilitate the development of patient safety policy and practice across all WHO member states and to act as a major force for patient safety improvement across the world. WHO mission is the mission of WHO patient safety is to coordinate facilitate and accelerate patient safety improvements around the world by being a leader advocating for change generating and sharing knowledge and expertise supporting member states in their in implementation of this patient safety action their vision is every patient should receive safe health care every time everywhere so world alliance for patient safety 10 actions area first one is clean care is a safe care safe surgery saves life patients for patient safety research for patient safety international classification for patient safety reporting and learning solutions to improve patient safety five heights who pro- project technology for patient safety knowledge management and some of the special projects regarding education radiotherapy rewarding excellence when things go wrong when christing sulfates everything so these are the catalyze to catalyze countries action to achieve safety of care these are the 10 action areas so what is a five h high fives who product a five high 
HIFI's steering group was established in 2006 to determine the overall architecture of the initiative. The project is being implemented in three phases. First phase is between 2006 to 2008, which is initiated in late 2006, has evolved the, involved the identification of five evidence-based solutions for patient safety and development of SOP for each solution. The solutions are managing concentrated injectable medicines, assuring medication accuracy at transition in care, communication during patient care handover, improved hand hygiene to prevent healthcare associated infection, and performance of correct procedure at correct body site. Let me repeat it. Managing concentrated injectable solutions, high risk drugs, assuring medic medication accuracy at transition in care, communication or uh, during handover, improved hand hygiene, and correct procedure at correct body site. The second phase has been started from 2008 to 2010. Identify a lead technical agency in each participating country to coordinate the five high five initiative at the country level. Impact will be measured using the following tool. Root cause analysis of indicator events and other adverse events patient safety indicators, cultural assessments, economic impact indices. These will be used to measure the impact of the whole project. The third phase has started from 2010 to 2011. Over time, the project has encouraged participating countries to their established relationship with other countries. What are the patient safety initiatives? Patient knows that their ailment may not always be cured, but they don't expect to be inadvertently harmed during their medical care. That is that the blame and the frame approach to medical error and close calls doesn't work well. Human factor engineering technique tease out root cause of the medical errors and the close calls. Playing the blame game an ineffective strategy for improving patient safety. Preventing inadvertent harm to patient safety requires use of human factor engineering principle, which will uh, tease uh, root causes. In other high hazard jobs, such as airplane flying and running nuclear reactor, such systems have been developed to minimize the risk based on the science of human factor engineering. Therefore, concept of patient safety has been derived from aviation industry. So the patient safety initiative is by implementing the human factor of engineering principles, which has been derived from aviation industry. So shared safety behavior between the aviation and the medication. The broader dimension, human factor in engineering, fatigue and stress management, effective communication, shared awareness, teamwork. These are the broader dimensions, like human factor engineering, fatigue and stress management, effective communication, shared awareness, teamwork. Countermeasure. What are the countermeasures which will prevent the, uh, uh, any harm to the patient or which will enhance safety? Briefing and debriefing, Workload distribution and demo, cross monitoring or supervision, graded assertiveness and checklist. These are the main things which have been taken as a counter mission to look over the safety measures. Listen for help from the airline industry. A statutory reporting of the procedures. If any procedures are there, they are supposed to report those a voluntary without jeopardy reporting culture. A voluntary reporting should be there. A record, recurring statutory examination should be there. There should be a body which should uh, again and again check the system transfer. System development, safety analysis of data, acceptance that staff make mistakes, and role of teamwork. These are the lessons we have learned from the online industry 
to make sure every each and every step as a safety measure. What are patient safety codes? Improve the accuracy of the patient identification so that we can identify the patient, we can prevent the any error to them. Improve the effectiveness of communication among the caregivers so that we might know what the patient has, if any allergy or something like that, what is the procedure to be done, identification process, identification site, everything we can know and improve the safety of using medication. By developing SOPs or something like that, we can prevent the or improve the use of medication wisely. Reduce the risk of healthcare associated infection by practicing a regular hand hygiene and uh, routine checklist. Accurately and completely reconcile medication across the continuum of care. During the care, we have to daily and routinely we have to reconsider things that and why for the medication given, what are the medication given are safe to patient. Reduce the risk of patient harm resulting from harm. And special emphasis on dangerous abbreviation, infection control, look alike and sound alike medications and time out has to be monitored very closely. So we will see about the, what are the principles of patient safety. Proper identification of patients and matching to their care elements. Prevention of patient handover error and safety during transition. We have to identify the patient. We have to give handover properly and we have to take the safety measures during transition and assessing medical accuracy while giving care to a patient. We have to assess the medical accuracy. And we have to assess the medication twice or thrice for giving a care. Performance of correct procedure to a correct body size. Take appropriate precautionary measures to avoid infection. These are the principles of patient safety. So what are the five rights of a patient? Right drug, right patient, right dose, right food, right time. These are the five things which constitutes the principle of patient safety. So let me repeat it again. Right drug, right patient, right dose, right food, right time. So what are the safety which we should be concentrating on? First, it is environmental safety. Next. Medical safety, then surgical safety, equipment installation safety, electrical safety, blood safety, sanitization, infection control, biomedical disposal safety, and lab safety. These are the main safety things we should be concentrating to provide a good and adequate patient safety. So let me elaborate each and everything. What is work, work environment safety? There is a direct link between work environment and patient safety. Therefore, if not addressing work environment, we are not addressing patient safety. Okay. Health work environment cannot just happen like that. Therefore, if we do not have a formal program in a place addressing work environment issue. Little will change and which can harm the patient. Creating a healthy work environment requires changing long standing culture, tradition, and hierarchy. Therefore, though everyone must be involved in the creation of healthy work environment, the onus is on organizational, departmental, and unit leader to ensure that. It happens. What is the environmental safety? We should provide an adequate light, adequate ventilation, exhaust fans, stairs with handrails, window door closed, sleep preventing floors, 
are extinguished with fire lamps, PPE, prevent noise pollution, heavy and fixed beds, safety wheelchairs, and products. No water logging in bathroom. Call bell system for patients. Adequate number of bed screens to maintain privacy of the patient. These are the environmental safety we can give to both the patient and the workers and the doctors who work in the hospital. So, what are the medical safety we should be following? First, we should avoid illegible writing prescription by doctor and wrong medications or wrong dose or wrong patients. When writing the patient or if you are prescribing some medication, we should avoid providing wrong medication, wrong dose, and for wrong patient. And we should avoid wrong injection, wrong dose, wrong patient, wrong route of administration. And we should be correctly looking at the drip sets, air bubbles, overhydration, drip speed, everything. If patient is on oxygen, check for the empty cylinders, check for the saturation for the leg. Oxygen is a drop. Clear written medication guidelines should be given in the hospital to prevent any adverse effects in the hospital. Identification of each patient with a similar patient name should be there. Unique ID should be there. And uh, based on the initials and so on, the patient should be identified at every time. So there should be a proper handing over and taking over during change of shift should be there or during the transition. And we are supposed to Know, look alike and sound like drugs so that we have to we can easily prevent any wrong drug administration to a patient. A medication order should be written legibly in it should include patient name and location, for example, what room number, bed number. Medicine should be prescribed in a generic name, dosage should be clearly mentioned. Frequency should be mentioned in words and route of administered administration should be written in full form. And signature of the physician and the name of the physician should be mentioned. Take and the how the order was written has to be mentioned. Any abbreviation used in medication should be agreed to and jointly adopted by whole hospital, medical nursing, pharmacy and medical record staff of the institution. Lately, in the interest of patient safety, do not abbreviate is a new practice nowadays. We are not supposed to abbreviate any medication. Before dispensing the drug, pharmacies must receive the physician's order or a direct copy of the order, except in emergency situation. This permits the pharmacist to resolve questions or problems with drug orders before the drug is dispensed and administered. Eliminate error which may arise when drug orders are transcribed into another form for use by the pharmacy. To check at least two patient identifiers before providing care, treatment, or services. For example, patient name and medical record number. Discourage telephonic orders. Do not accept verbal order and examine the safety codes. Methods of sending physician order to pharmacy. Self-copying order forms. This method provides the pharmacist with a duplicate copy of the order and does not require special equipment. There are two basic formats. Orders for medication include among uh, treatment orders, Medication orders separated from other treatment orders on the order form. Electromechanical. Copying machines or similar device may be used to produce an exact copy of physician's order. Provision should be made to transmit physician's order to pharmacy in the event of mecha mechanical failure. And third one can be computerized. Computer system in which a physician enters order into a com computer 
which then stores and prints out the order in the pharmacy or elsewhere. These are the methods we can avoid or we can practice to send the physician order to the pharmacy. What is the surgical safety we can practice? Surgical safety, the consent of the patient, relative in writing, proper identification of the patient, wristbands, proper identification of mark, mark the parts to be operated, pre-anesthetic checkup, and uh, proper identification of any prior known allergies, proper handing over, anesthetic safety checklist, ensure no foreign body left inside, safety measures from what to OT and coming back, safety checklist, prevention of surgical wound infection, use of surgical safety performer in all operation, check safety code if available, for example, DNA, viral risk, allergies, purple, yellow, red for respective things. Like DNR is purple, fall risk is yellow, allergy is red. WHO surgical check, safety checklist. The primary benefit of the checklist may be to engage the medical team. By using the checklist, we may be gaining the ability to open communication by the medical team to encourage teamwork behaviors and to develop a discipline in the team. Reducing the sentinel error. The main aim of the WHO surgical safety checklist is to reduce the sentinel error, which will happen in day to day life. What are the installation hazards? So, if any mechanical things or equipments which are getting installed near to the patient and the working environment, regular checking of equipment should be there and a plan of, of the equipment checking should be there. Proper earthling to avoid shock should be there and regular maintenance and repair should be there. Training of nurse and a technical staff has to be done to avoid any hazards from the injury equipments. How do you control hazards? A preventing inadvertent harm to patient requires use of human factor engineering principle. As I said earlier, this will identify the root cause. The hierarchy of hazard control needs eliminate the hazard. If any hazard is there, stop that hazard to the patient and guard the patient from again happening same hazard. Train the staff to avoid the hazard. Then later, we have to warn the patient or warn the person for the, for the future hazard. These are the main hierarchy for the control of the hazards. Building a patient safety. Patient safety is, is the topmost priority is one. The base is formed by standardized protocol product identification then standardized location identification, standardized product definition. Mm -hmm. These forms the base of the building of patient safety. Pillars are formed by automatic data capture, e-commerce, electric record management, and assess and uh, equipment tracking and teachability. These forms the main pillar of the building. Next, the roof is formed by the healthcare supply chain efficiency, which will provide effective patient safety. What are new devices? Acceptance, safety inspection, compatibility, education, procedures, and appropriate purchasing documents should be there. When in doubt, have certified equipment check, supply chain management. So if any new devices come into practice, we have to follow these steps to prevent any hazard happening to the patient. Why we should report medical device problems? This reporting prevents future problems, protect the patient, staff, family, and visitors from hazard happening to any one of them. Achieve performance improvement goal, 
assist risk management with claims or litigation, provide information to manufacturers and or food and drug administration, publicize a report for general good of patient and healthcare providers, effect change in policy and procedure of procurement through that's why we have to report the medical device problem. When to report, when you think a device has or many have cost or contributed to any of the following outcomes like death, serious injury, minus injury, close calls, or other potential form, for, form of harm. What is individual story? Identify actual and potential problem, adverse event close calls with medical device and report the problem. To your supervisor, according to policy and practice, make sure you report includes details of the harm, what is the device, when it is installed, etc. Then, what are the steps to be followed? Remove the device, keep all affected items separate, save the packaging. What is the electrical safety? So, Things we have to look for electrical safety is safety fuses with each equipment, no loose wire or connection, properly plugged and fixed. If short circuit called electrician, electricity backup, like battery or generator should be there. Use of CVT or UPS should be there. What are the fire safety we are going to look into? Use fireproof material for construction. Have fire exit in all buildings, smoke detectors, and water sprinklers on the roof of all floor. Fire extinguisher in all area. Fire hydrants in all buildings. Training in fire management should be there. This is how we are going to provide fire safety. Well, what is a blood safety? Blood should be properly grouped, cross matched before transmission. And we have to assess whether that blood contains a uh, infective material like HIV, hepatitis, VDRL, etc. Proper leveling of group, name of the patient, control of mismatch reaction, standard operating procedure for transfusion has to be maintained. And uh, screening against the HIV, hepatitis, VD, malaria should be there. If any adverse reaction, it should be informed to blood bank. This is how we are going to look after the blood safety. Next, sanitation, infection control, biomedical disposal. So these are both three things are interlinked. First, we have to follow the sanitization and hand hygiene of different parts of the hospital to avoid infection. Then we have to properly segregate, identify, transport the biomedical waste separately and we are supposed to use sterile procedure sanitization infection control biomedical disposal these are as i told these are interlinked so we have we are supposed to do sterile procedure to avoid infection control Safety in use of incinerator, autoclave, shredder, needle destroyer, and proper disposal of biomedical waste should be there. Formation of hospital infection control committee should be there. Investigation of all hospital infection. Use of proper antibiotics in right dose in right time. Reorientation of a resident doctor and nursing health staff should be there in the team of sanitization, infection control, and biomedical waste disposal. What are the lab, lab safety? We are supposed to avoid needle stick injury, spilling of blood, safety measures in radial and radiotherapy department, safety norm guidelines for different areas of hospital, regular pest control measures, care in handling acids, reagents, inflammable substances, biomedical waste segregation and disposal. So who is responsible? All three, nurse, the doctor, and patient themselves, all are responsible. Patient involvement, individual advocacy, 
in doctor and hospital visits they, they should share information create list of health problems previous operation etc list or bring on medication supplements and vitamins what they are taking and they sh we should get the information from the patient ask questions about treatments medications etc research illness and treatments bring an advocate know what to do before leaving ask about medication and future appointments so how to prevent medical errors by patients medicines make sure that all of the doctor know about every medication you are taking this includes prescription and over the counter medication and dietary supplements such as vitamins and herbs bring all of your medicines and supplements to your doctors your medicine can help you and your doctor talk about them and find out if there are any problem make sure your doctor know about any allergies and adverse reaction you have to had to the medicines when your doctor writes a prescription for you make sure you can read it ask for information about your medic medicines in term you can understand for both when you medicines are prescribed and when you take them what is the medication for how am i supposed to take it and for how long what side effects are likely what do i do if they occur is this medicine safe to take it with other medication dietary supplement i'm taking what food drink or activity should i avoid during taking the medicines so when you pick up your know, medic medicine from the pharmacy ask is this the medication that my doctor prescribed if you have any questions about the directions on medical medicine label ask if four times daily means take a dose every 6 hours around the clock or just during regular waking hours ask your pharmacist for the best device to measure your liquid medicine special devices like marker syringes help people measure the right dose ask for a written information about the side effects your medication could cause if you know what might happen you will be better prepared if it does or if something unexpected happens so in hospital stay what the patient should do if you are in a hospital consider asking all healthcare workers who will touch you whether they have washed their hands hand washing can prevent the spread of infection in hospital when you are being discharged from hospital ask your doctor to explain the treatment plan you will follow at home about your new medications when you can be, get back to your work club or continue old medication before you are hospital stay when to come back for the follow up uh, if surgery is that if you are having a surgery make sure that you and your doctor and your surgeon all agree on the exactly what will be done surgeon are expected to sign the initial directly on site to be operated on the day of, before surgery if you have a choice choose a hospital where many patients have had the procedure or surgery you need the research shows that patients tend to have better results when they are treated in hospital that have a very great field of experience with their condition other step what they should be following speak up if you have a question or concern make sure that someone such as your primary care doctor coordinates your care make sure that all your doctors have your important health information learn about your condition and treatment by asking your doctor and nurse and by using other reliable sources what are the things to be done by patient representative in healthcare organization work to improve safety at organization and individual unit level serve on committee and boards assist on grounds and uh, hear patient grievances support staff and families what are some patient advocate should do for friends and family willingness to go with the patient to appointment be with them in the hospital and clinic listening and taking notes speaking up when necessary to clarify an issue and ask a question question when something does not seem right in the hospital nursing homes and clinics etc so how to prevent medical errors by medical staff proper communication and coordination deficit drive errors application of aviation safety concepts and skills are being introduced in healthcare 
strong correlation between team work results, improved patient outcome, patient satisfaction, staff satisfaction, reduce error, reduce malpractice claims, reduce blame culture. Two challenge rule. It is our responsibility to assertively voice your concern at least two times to ensure that it has been heard. Member being challenged must acknowledge, provide supporting information with second challenge. If the outcome is still not accept acceptable, you see your concern, uncomfortable, stop. Take a stronger course of action. Empower any member of the team to stop the line. If he or she senses or discovers an essential safety breach. How to do an effective communication? Communication breakdowns contribution factor in 43% of adverse surgical events. Pivotal factor in 65% of sentinel events. Primary contribution factor around 70 to 80% of root cause analysis. So effective communication is very useful. Com these problems occur in medic medical errors, medical malpractice cases, adverse surgical events, adverse medical events, and sentinel events. Ad how to do a adverse, adverse incident reporting? Complete and submit. Notify the risk management, drunk controller notification if medical device or medicine error. Begin root cause or intensive analyze to examine the process change that may prevent future events. Take preventive measures for future miss. So we have to ask for a peer review. How to do that? Monitor and improve physician care of a patient. Accomplished by open and non-punitive discussion. Review and discuss alternatives. Disseminate to all physicians. Monthly review schedule. Move towards review previous 48 hours record code blue in terms of code blue. Could this event have been prevented? Where signs of deterioration missed? Elevated BP, dropping BP, elevated heart rate, dropping heart rate, elevated breast rate. rate. Healthcare executive roles. Set the culture. They should be accountable. Measures should be taken. High reliability and redesign should be there. Communication and team, team work should be there. Professional development should be there. So what are the relative, uh, reliability principles? Simplification, standardization, relay, relation of humans to the work and environment. What are the barriers to implement? Top seven barriers to implementation of patient safety system. Competing priorities for scarce resource in a system where patient safety is not considered a top priority. Lack of resource, availability and cause of patient uh, safety technology, resistance to change, culture of blame, lack of senior leadership, culture of healthcare workforce, imperception, attitude and behavior of error, cover up attitude. Practice of patient safety, beware of a look alike, sound alike medication name, proper patient identification, explain details. Performance of correct procedure, careful electrolyte about electrolyte imbalance, assure proper treatment, avoid catheter and tubing, wrong connection, single use of injection syringe, improved hand hygiene to prevent healthcare associated infection, proper disposal of biomedical waste management, good housekeeping, practice surgical safety guidelines. Tips for improving the patient's safety. Constitution of Patient Safety Community, develop clear policy and protocol for patient safety, discuss the regularly patient uh, safety initiative within the hospital staff, orientation, reorientation of the staff, encourage transparency in the regular death review, non punitive incident reporting by staff, each department to devise their own patient safety protocol, investigate each accident or incident reported at this remedial measure, review, monitor, and evaluate. That's how we are going to produce give a regular safety to the patient. Thank you.